How do you record Minecraft so you can make your own YouTube videos for free? Hello everyone and welcome to OMG Craft. I'm your host, OMG Chad. We did a spotlight on OBS a long time ago. OBS stands for Open Broadcast Software and it is the free way to record Minecraft. Well, there's been quite a few updates to OBS, so I wanted to do a new video on how to record your Minecraft using free software. So this is where you want to start your adventure with OBS. Download OBS Studio at obsproject.com. I suggest getting the studio if you really badly want the classic version. It's down here, but uh, it hasn't really been developed for recently. Go ahead and download that and install OBS Studio. Once you open it up, it'll look something like this. I've created a new profile and a new scene to work with. I'll get to profiles and scenes a little bit later. So before, there's a whole bunch of behind the scenes that we could talk about, but let's just start building a scene. So in order to do that, I'm gonna open up Minecraft in the background. So we're just gonna have Minecraft open. We're gonna click play. And I'm going to let this open and load in the background, but really I'm going to be still running OBS. So you can see Minecraft is back here, but OBS is in the front. So we're going to add Minecraft in. Go ahead and click the, you have scenes, which are basically like your canvases. And so you could select between three different canvases with different arrangements of sources. And then you have your sources. And basically your sources apply to the scene that you have selected. There's a default one, so we're just gonna work with that one. Go ahead and click plus and click add game capture. Now you're presented with this dialogue. You could say this is Minecraft if you wanted to, uh, or you can add an existing. We don't have an existing quite yet. By default, it says capture any full screen application. I like to play my games not in full screen, so we're gonna capture a specific window. You have the window that you're selecting, and we're going to choose Minecraft. Then it's going to jump in, and you have this executable window. Class. I'll be honest, I still don't remember exactly what that is useful for. Uh, you can choose uh, limit the capture frame rate, your resolution, or if you capture the cursor or not, if you want to. Go ahead and click OK. Here is the source. Now, I happen to be running uh, the, the base canvas size is going to be the size of your monitor. And I happen to have a 1440 monitor, which is larger than a 1080p uh, resolution by default. So you can see that there is this black space around my source. I could fix that in a few ways. Either I could do control F to make it full screen. I'm going to do control R to reset that. I could click and drag this to be full screen um, or I could go into my settings and change my canvas size. Uh, we're going to change the canvas size in just a little bit because it, you really should set it down to something that's normal like 1080 or 720p. Uh, that's 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. Let's say I want a webcam on this first though. Let's go ahead and choose the plus. Let's choose a uh, video capture device. And we don't have one selected. We can name it anything. You can name it webcam, doesn't matter. We're gonna choose okay. And it'll take a little while for uh, this to load in all the different webcams on my system. And I have a few different versions uh, of different capture cards or software. Uh, and we're gonna choose the C922 Pro webcam. Uh, once that is selected, you can choose, oh, hi. Hi, there I am. We're gonna choose custom. We're gonna choose a resolution of 1280 by 720. You can do whatever frame rate you want. And uh, hopefully this will reactivate here. Activate and go. You can also choose configure video, which will open up the settings of whichever webcam you're running. So if it's Logitech, it'll most likely open up Logitech software. If it's uh, something else, it would open up something else. There you go. So you can see my properties here. So once we're done with that, go ahead and choose OK. And you have the webcam. Now you can drag it all around. 
You can resize it, which is tends to be what I do, and place it up in the corner, place it down below, all of those things. So anyway, uh, so now that you have your camera, which looks like my camera crashed. Camera, come back! Camera, there we go. Ah, we got the camera back. Um, so now you have a basic scene. So what happens if you want to change something? Like you want a scene that doesn't have your webcam. Well, you can choose either plus and recreate this, or you could right click your scene and say duplicate. We'll name it scene two and it's by default. And then you can turn off your webcam by choosing the little eye next to that. So now you have a scene that has this one layer turned off and you have a scene that has it turned on. And you can see that it nicely fades in between those two scenes. If you didn't want it to fade, you can change your transition mode to cut and it will cut between the two scenes. Or you could change it to fade, but you could add a, a whole a three second fade here. So whenever I click it, it's gonna slowly fade the webcam in. Uh, it is up to you how you want to uh, have that done. Now, you have some scenes, you can build all sorts of stuff in here. You could add, uh, I have sometimes imagery that will add a border that I made in Photoshop around my webcam to make it look a little nicer. You can go as crazy as you want. Let's get into the settings because right now we're actually not capturing any audio. And like I was mentioning before, that base resolution is a little bit big. In general, you can change whatever you want. Oh, by the way, one thing is that I do have dark mode, the dark theme. This is going to be your default theme. I just realized that. So I have the dark theme enabled. That's kind of what I like. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's going to look dark. Probably should have mentioned that in the beginning. Um, but yeah, so you have all that. You can change automatically record when start streaming. These are some things that I have enabled. You can copy my settings if you want. Now, going on over to stream. You can decide to stream or you could decide not to. It's up to you, to which is normal. You type in your stream key here, which is something that Twitch gives you from their website. Now on to output. You have two modes, simple and advanced. And advanced is very advanced. This is if you want a, maybe a specific audio track. It has a built-in audio mixer. I keep it on simple. It's much, much simple. Uh, the max streaming bit rate is uh, 35 that you can give Twitch. And you can choose exactly how you want your recordings to be saved. You can save it to an MP4, uh, to as high quality as you want, uh, the same as the stream, and where that gets saved. And if you know FFmpeg, you could do your own Muxer settings if you want. A quick note, uh, MP4, if for some reason OBS crashes, if you're recording an MP4, the video file will be lost forever if it doesn't stop the recording. With a FLAV, FLV, uh, it will be saved and you can see it except that normally it's hard to edit FLV files. So you may have to transcode it before you edit it. So there's pluses and minuses between these two. All the other ones I kind of ignore. I don't. I either use uh, FLV if I'm worried about crashing, and I use MP4 if I want to edit. Sometimes I record an FLV and encode into MP4 just to edit. Let's go on to audio. Audio, you have lots of different audio tracks, which I really like about OBS. I happen to know my own audio setup, but in normal situations, the desktop audio device is what your speakers are. So where your speakers, where the sound is coming to you, what you normally have selected as your speakers. So if you're using a USB headset, you need to choose the USB headset. If you're using a Realtek audio out of your, of your, you know, to speakers, use, uh, the, choose those speakers. Next is your mic. And this is whatever mic you are using. Um, I happen to use a completely different program. Um, and so I would choose, uh, only, voice meter i use voice meter and so i would use i would choose this as my only mic input because my computer routes through that too i have a kind of a complicated thing and once you hit apply you should be able to see right over here this is the audio level and this is really nice that you can see the audio level as you're talking so you know that audio is being recorded now remember for most people you're going to use your desktop audio Video, this is where we get to what I was talking about, that base canvas resolution. Is it's using my monitor's default, and these are all three of my monitors. 
you may want to choose this as to something a little bit more reasonable. You can also downscale the resolution if you want to. It's up to you. I suggest doing something like 1920, whoa, not 19, 19,000, 1920 by 1080, and then hitting apply. And you can see once I hit apply that everything kind of changed, uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but everything got a little bit uh, smaller and, than it was before. Next, you have hotkeys, and you can assign hotkeys for basically everything. Muting and unmuting your mic, push to talk, going, switching between uh, specific scenes. I mean, all sorts of stuff. I love this hotkey layout is way more advanced in OBS Studio. And then you have some advanced stuff about stream delay, about how the recording file is named, about your... Uh, I mean, just all sorts of stuff, your frame rate interval or keyframe intervals, stuff like that. So that is about it. Let's go ahead and click apply. And as you can see, I'm a little bit larger than I was before. And what's happening is uh, when we made that canvas size smaller, it just cropped off all the other stuff that isn't used. So if we go to Minecraft and hit control R or right click this and go to transform, reset, transform, it will reset it to its size and this window happens to be 1920 by 1080 p so it's a perfect pixel for pixel resolution i go to this video capture device remember i set this at 720 so if i hit or transform and reset it will, will not be quite as large as it should be but it will be large enough for us also while we're talking about this right click there's some really nice things you can do in it like rotate something 180 degrees so i am upside down you could also say flip this vertically or horizontally stretch to fit screen center as well let's go ahead and reset all of this because we're going a little bit crazy uh, and that center is also control d if you want to center something as well and I think that uh, let's get into a little bit about studio mode. So studio mode, you have two of these monitors on the right hand side is your program. This is what is being recorded. You could almost imagine a big red flashing light over this corner as this is being recorded over on the left hand side. This is your preview. This only you see and doesn't get recorded. What this means, though, is you can go over to these other sides and change things around before it gets recorded and then transition over to it in the recording by either a cut or a fade. Uh, and you can click either of those click and it will move over to the other side, which is really, really cool. So if I wanted to, if let's say I was in this and Oh gosh, oh man, this doesn't look quite right. I can select Minecraft and drag it over and make it full screen. And I can do all of this without anyone seeing in the recording. And then when it is ready, hit fade and it fades over to the other side. This is a really, really powerful and I'm amazed that this is built into OBS Studio. I prefer this situation, but a lot of people can get confused because they may see what's over on this side on the left hand side and think that it's being recorded. Only the stuff on the right hand side is being recorded. So if it's not showing up over here, well, you are out of luck, unfortunately. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways uh, to, to do this. You can um, I mean, just there's this is so incredibly powerful. What's also crazy is let's say uh, it's not just switching between two scenes so we can switch between both scenes, but you can also edit a scene that you're already on. So this top scene is what I'm on. If I wanted to make my camera larger and centered, I'm still on this scene and I can cut over to it, which is really cool. You can cut to the, your, the same scene that you're on. Uh, I believe that's about it. Of course, you would start recording and start streaming with these two buttons. You get to your settings from this button down here. By the way, if you're not in studio mode, anytime you select a scene, you'll immediately be sent to it. And anything that you change and move will be in your recording as well. So that is how you can freely record Minecraft 
from your computer using OBS Studio. One more thing before we go, I do wanna mention this because this is one of the coolest parts of OBS is that you can have multiple profiles and multiple scene setups. So if I wanted to uh, go to my stream and uh, make sure that I'm not always on my stream, I can go to A1 stream and that changes the resolution and settings. And if I hit start stream, I would start streaming to my Twitch channel. But let's say maybe I have a different stream that I want to go to or a 1080p recording. I can do that from the different profiles. Profiles are more of like a behind the scenes back end. They change your settings under this settings area. That's what it changes. Next is your scene selection, which only changes your scenes. So you can have a whole bunch of scenes set up. I have this for OMG Craft. I have a different one for, uh, let's say, uh, streaming. This is one of my streaming setups where I have the setup here. If we go into studio mode, you can see a little bit more. You can see me. You can see my you know, bit donation stuff. You can see the game with this overlay with people's donations. Then you could go into a different streaming. This is a completely different streaming setup where I have, uh, this is my, uh, my countdown timer. I have a face cam over here. I have a different bits. So I have a game that looks a lot like this. I mean, you can save all sorts of different scene selections uh, in this. My recording scene, scene selection looks like this, where I have just a clean, uh, no face cam. I have one that has a face cam, and then I have one that is full face cam. Those are the three different scenes that I have in my recording setup. So having uh, the ability to switch between profiles and scene collections is really, really, really nice so that you can set something up for one thing like a stream and set something up for something else completely different like recording. I hope that this video is useful for you and is a good update to the old video that we did. OBS Studio, I think, is a big improvement to OBS Classic, and they don't really even develop for OBS Classic anymore. All of the new developments are for OBS Studio, and if you wanna get into streaming, it's an easy step to jump into streaming, not just recording your videos. Thanks so much for watching this episode of OMG Craft. If you liked it, leave a like, and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos. I'll see you next time on OMG Craft. Bye.